Hello again folks, I am Blunty. Now the video I'm about to show you is actually a cross post from one of the other channels I manage and produce content for, DigiDirect TV, which is a photography related uh, web TV kind of series thingy that I do in conjunction with digidirect.com.au and it's all about photography and stuff obviously and the reason I'm cross posting here is to remind you guys that that stuff is happening over there so the guys the people who come to this channel for my photography related stuff in particular if you haven't subscribed over there yet it's worth doing it because I, everything I do there is photography related and I'm cross posting this particular episode because well, frankly I think it's a damn fine episode let me know what you think Hey Shadowbuggers, welcome to another episode of DigiDirect TV. Now, in a recent episode of DigiDirect TV, I went through the marvellous possibilities of teaming up the Sony RX100 with an iPad for on-the-go video making, and it's a brilliant team up, and a lot of you have agreed, and a lot of you had questions like, is there an Android alternative for editing videos? And to this point I haven't found one. I am researching it. If I do find something worthwhile you can guarantee you I'll be making a video about it. If any of you out there have a suggestion for a really good capable video editor for the Android platform please let me know because they're much much harder to find on Android than they are on iOS. I'm telling you that now. One of the other questions I got was well that's fine for video but I'm more interested in stills. Is there a, a can't miss must have picture editing program for your iPad or indeed your Android tablet and yes there is it's called Snapseed it's made by a company called Nick Software and they were recently bought out by Google and Google recently updated it to have built-in compatibility with Google Plus which is the place you want to be if you are a photographer and you want to share your photos and join photography communities and get feedback and just have a great time it is simply the best place to be if you're a snaphead Snaphead, Snapperhead, something, <laughs> I don't know. And of course, because Google now owns it, they released an Android version for it. It was iOS originally only, but now it's on both platforms and it works pretty much exactly the same on both platforms. Still a little more buggy in Android because the Android version is newer, it hasn't quite matured yet, but still brilliant. But there is one more absolutely brilliant tip I can give you about shooting in the wild if you're out there with your camera and your iPad or, or your Android tablet and you're completely mobile, you're on the move, you're on holidays or you're travel blogging or something, whatever it is, and it's a fantastic piece of hardware that I won't be without. I love it to bits. It has come in so handy, so often, that I can't help but recommend it to you. It is the secret weapon of any clever snapper on the move. It is a tiny accessory for your camera that empowers you to do the kinds of things that mobile phone photographers take for granted, really. It lets you shoot, edit, share, all without ever having to pull out your memory card and sit down at your computer and your hard drives. It untethers you from USB cables and memory card readers and plugging things into other things. I don't mean to break the fourth wall here, but you do realize how stupid and contrived this is. I've set up a video camera to record myself taking a shot so I can then show you about editing the shot and it just it's all silly but look this this is the secret weapon this is the iFi card and this thing is fantastic if you don't know what these are it's an SD memory card like any other SD memory card but it has a built-in wireless access point built-in Wi-Fi which means it can instantly beam your photos direct to your smartphone or via a Wi-Fi access point direct to the cloud so you can then pull them down and share them and put them on Facebook or Twitter or Google Plus or whatever. You can even set up your iFi card to pretend it's got unlimited storage space. It does this by uploading images to your phone or tablet or to a cloud storage service as it gets full, then deleting those uploaded images from the card itself to make more room. Very cool, but I'm a bit extra paranoid and I'd rather not have the card deciding to delete images, even if it thinks they're safely uploaded elsewhere. I've got mine set up so that it only transfers those photos which I lock protect on the camera. In this way, I can choose to transfer only the images to my iPad that I'm currently interested in working with, which is more time efficient and more space efficient, I reckon. So, once I lock an image, it triggers the upload to go to the smartphone or a tablet app, and it simply pops your images right into your camera roll or image gallery, ready to go to work on in your favourite editor of choice, and then upload it to wherever you want to share it to. It's a wonderfully elegant solution. 
Now, of course, you can use the camera connection kit with your iPad to move your photos across, but that won't work for the iPhone, and it won't work for Android devices. Many Android devices, phone or tablet, this direct hardware connection is either impossible or a complete pain in the bum. So the iFi card simply makes it much, much easier to get it done, and with the benefit of being able to use the same iFi card with a bunch of different devices, depending on which one you got with you, and yes, even your laptop. Now back to Snapseed. It's relatively intuitive and very fast to work with. It's all about swipes up and down to select the functions of each tool and then left and right to adjust the strength of the adjustment or effect. It's got enough tools and power to satisfy most pixel punches out there and 98% of every photo I upload from a mobile device will go through it to punch things up a bit. The only thing I don't like are the lack of decent filters and the frames suck. So I'll often throw my snap seeded images into Camera Plus for some final touches with filters and frames that I like. And between those two apps, I've got pretty much everything I'll ever need to tart up my snaps ready to go. There are still some specialist apps I keep around for doing special effects and stuff, but yeah, but these two do pretty much everything I'll ever need. It's such a freeing experience going for a walk, shooting whatever catches my eye, then plonking myself down in a local cafe for a relaxing pot of Earl Grey tea and a muffin, and being able to review, edit, and share my photos right there and then, while the experience is still fresh, humming around inside my skull. It keeps the whole experience feeling much, much more immediate and organic than it is waiting till you get home, then importing your shots and browsing through them, the TV's on in the background, all that kind of stuff. And sure, I suppose you could lug your laptop around with you and get the job done with your full-on editing software, but the whole point here is travelling super light, not being weighed down, being super mobile, being free and adventurous. All you need is your camera and your phone. That's it. Maybe a mobile tablet device, you prefer that, but that's it. You can pick up an iFi card in either 4, 8 or 16 gigabyte capacities, and yes, they'll work just as well with recording video and of course transferring that video exactly like it does with photos. So that's it. That's pretty much all you need for a terrific ultra mobile photography workflow and sharing system thing. <laughs> it's, it works brilliantly. I've been using this exact sort of setup for ages now and it works so well and I love it to be. It just, it's the ultimate really. Even better with the iPad mini these days. Join us each and every Wednesday for more DigiDirect TV goodness. For now, that's your lot. You can join us uh, subscribe on the YouTube channel, you can join us on the Google Plus community that we've got going on and share your photos and get some feedback and all that sort of stuff and ask for advice and uh, share your miseries from time to time um, and of course email me directly at the email thing on your screen if you've got any questions or suggestions for future episodes or uh, products you want to see me take a look at or again we're going back to the beginning again if you've got some good ideas for video editing solutions for Android devices that don't suck like the devil himself. So, till next Wednesday, happy shooting. Mm. Not bad, Earl Grey.